In this video we will deal with the design and operation of a thermocouple which is used to measure temperatures. So let's get started. A thermocouple consists of two electrical conductors connected together at one end. This junction is exposed to the temperature to be measured. Due to the heat, an electrical voltage is generated, which serves as a measure of the temperature. How such a voltage results will be explained in the following. Seebeck effect. A thermocouple uses the phenomenon that a voltage is caused by the presence of a temperature gradient along an electrical conductor. The cause of this thermoelectric effect lies in the metallic bonding of metals, and in particular in the free movement of the electrons. If a metal wire or a bar is only heated at one end, the lattice oscillations and the movements of the free electrons increase there. Because of the heavy collisions they begin to spread and diffuse to the cold end. At this end, the kinetic energies of the electrons are lower and the electrons accumulate there. The electron gas behaves literally like a real gas whose particles occupy a larger space when heated and the particle density decreases accordingly. The hot end of the wire thus has a smaller number of electrons than the cold end. As a result, an electrical voltage is obtained between the two ends, also known as thermoelectric voltage. This thermoelectric effect is also called the Seebeck effect, and the thermoelectric voltage is also referred to as Seebeck voltage. Per Kelvin temperature difference along an electrical conductor, the Seebeck effect is in the order of a few microvolts. At a given temperature gradient, the thermoelectric voltage is strongly dependent on the conductor material. In the case of materials whose free electrons can be set in motion relatively easily when heated, the thermoelectric voltage is greater because the electrons are more strongly spread. Thermocouple If a short piece of wire were exposed to a heat source, the wire would heat up evenly. Due to the lack of temperature gradient between the ends, no thermoelectric voltage would be measured. Therefore, two different conductors are required which differ in magnitude of the Seebeck effect, for example copper and iron. The different wires are now connected at one end. This joint serves as a measuring junction, called hot junction, and is exposed to the temperature to be measured. The other ends lead to the so-called reference junction, called cold junction, the temperature of which is usually ambient temperature. There is now a temperature gradient between the measuring junction and the reference junction and thus between the ends of the respective wires. This results in a thermoelectric effect with the consequence of an electrical voltage. Since these are different metals, the thermoelectric effect is different in strength. For example, compared to copper, iron has a thermoelectric voltage around six times as high. Since the two metals are connected to each other at the measuring junction, they are at the same electric potential. As a result, the electric potentials at the reference junction differ, and an electrical voltage is caused that can be measured with a voltmeter. This electrical voltage can also be explained as follows. The diffusion of electrons from the measuring point to the reference point due to the temperature gradient is much more intense with iron. Thus more electrons will accumulate there than at the end of the copper wire. This leads to a charge imbalance between the wire ends at the reference junction, in favor of increased electron accumulation at the end of the iron wire. A measurable voltage is generated at the reference junction, which is dependent on the temperature difference between the reference junction and the measuring junction. Cold junction compensation With the measurement setup described so far, only the temperature difference between the measuring junction and the reference junction can be determined with the measured voltage. To determine the absolute temperature at the measuring point, the temperature at the reference junction must therefore be known. This determination of the temperature at the reference junction, which is also called cold junction, is referred to as cold junction compensation. The cold junction temperature can, for example, be determined with a PT100, whose electrical signal can then be processed directly with the thermoelectric voltage in order to output the temperature at the measuring point. The cold junction temperature sensor is usually located inside the housing of the measuring instrument. The actual thermocouple is then connected to the measuring device via a plug-in connection. Types of thermocouples 
The selection of materials to generate the thermoelectric voltage of a thermocouple is of great importance. The following properties of the material combination are taken as a basis. Highest possible thermoelectric voltages. Highest possible corrosion resistance. Linear characteristic between temperature difference and thermoelectric voltage, high accuracy. Linearity over a wide temperature range. Up to now, no material pairing has been able to cover all required properties to the same extent. Therefore, different material combinations, so-called types, are used depending on the application. Type J, copper nickel alloy and iron, can be used from approximately minus 200 degrees Celsius to 750 degrees Celsius. Type K, nickel chromium alloy and nickel, can be used from approximately minus 250 degrees Celsius to 1200 degrees Celsius. Type R, platinum rhodium alloy and platinum, can be used from approximately minus 50 degrees Celsius to 1,500 degrees Celsius. Type K is the most common type in private use. Advantages of thermocouples The advantage of thermocouples is their relatively short delay time. This means that they react very quickly to changes in temperature. In addition, thermocouples are mechanically very robust and cover a temperature range from minus 250 degrees Celsius to plus 2000 degrees Celsius depending on the type. In addition, due to their space-saving design, thermocouples can also easily reach hard-to-reach locations. Due to the relatively small measuring tip, thermocouples can also measure temperatures of very small objects. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.